and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 301, remove invalid parentheses. Given a string s that contains parentheses and letters, remove the minimum number of invalid parentheses to make the input string valid. Return all possible results. You may return the answer in any order. Let's look at an example. Say we're given this input here. What would be our solution here? Well, let's count the number of parentheses. So for the left, we have one, two, three left parentheses. For the right, we have one, two, three, four. So obviously there's a mismatch between the left and the right parentheses. So obviously we can't get rid of left parentheses because then we'll just have even left less left, <laughs> less left, and we'd still have the same amount of right. So clearly the right parentheses are the ones that we need to remove. So as we can see, there's this one right parenthesis, which is, oops, let me change my color here so you can actually see this. And we'll use green. So there's this one right parenthesis, which is invalid because it doesn't have a corresponding left parenthesis. So we could remove it and then we'd get this as one answer. So this would be closed. So this is one potential answer. Or what we could do is we could remove one of the lefts that comes before it. So, for example, we could remove, um, let's see, one of these left ones, or sorry, one of these right ones. We don't necessarily have to remove this right one. It could be one of the ones earlier. So we could remove this one, and we'd get, you know, left, left, and then the two rights, right, right, and then closed. And that would be a valid answer. And obviously, in this case, we've removed just one parenthesis from both of these, right? In the first case, we removed this one here this first one and then in the second one I believe we removed this one so in both those cases we just removed one obviously we could just remove every single parenthesis but we're looking for the minimum number we need to remove so obviously that's not a good answer because we'll just end up removing everything so the way that we're gonna solve this is actually using a backtracking DFS <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the beginning of the string and we're gonna go to the left uh, sorry to the from left to right and what we're going to do is that every iteration, we're going to make a decision of whether or not we want to take the current parenthesis or leave it. Those are our two options, right? We can either take the current parenthesis or we can ignore it if it's going to be invalid. So, you know, with other parenthesis problems that we've done before, we know that, okay, if, you know, the left count is actually less than the right count or equal to it, then that means that we're not allowed to take any right parentheses because that would be invalid and there's no possible left parenthesis that could close a right parenthesis if we took it if this statement is true. So we can do some sort of validation as we go to basically make sure that um, our right parentheses don't ever uh, exceed the left parenthesis before it. So we can make sure that when we get to a, a right parenthesis we can do that check and that means that we'll need to keep track of our left parenthesis count and our right parenthesis count. As we're going, we don't know when we see a left parenthesis whether or not we're going to see a right parenthesis later that can close it. So we're going to take all left parentheses greedily and we're also going to ignore it in the case that you weren't allowed to take it because we're not going to be able to go back and remove things. We're simply going to evaluate once we get to the end of the string, does the left count equal to the right count? If it does, then that means that we have found a valid parenthesis and we can double check whether the answer works. So as we go from left to right, we're going to build our strings using a string builder and, you know, in a backtracking manner. And what we're going to do when we get to the end, we're going to say, OK, does left equal right? If it does, then we want to look at the length of our string, right? We want the minimum number of parentheses removed. So we're looking for the longest possible string at the end, such that left equals right, right? Because if we the longer it is, that means that we removed less items. So if our new string, let's say its length is five, if that equals to the maximum length that we've seen so far for an answer, then we can add it to our answer. Add to answer, right? If actually five is greater than our answer that we found so far, then that means that everything in our last answer was invalid and we need to reset our answer to be whatever this new length is, five, and then just add that string to it. So this is a little bit confusing. I think once we go to the code editor, you'll see exactly what I mean and we'll walk by everything line by line. This question really isn't that complicated. I think it's just a mishmash of backtracking plus knowing how to work with parentheses 
if this is confusing, go watch some of my other videos uh, and they should explain how to work with parentheses. I've done a lot of questions before. This one is really no different. It just has that backtracking element to it. So enough blabbing. Let's go to the code editor and we're going to type this up. It's actually really not that bad. And let's solve this question. We're in the code editor. Let's type this up. Let me give us a little bit of extra room here because we don't actually care about the question prompt. We just want to see the code. So we need a few variables to help us with our solution. Like I mentioned, we need to keep track of the longest string that we found so far that works as an answer. And we also need to find our, um, you know, our solution set. So we're going to say self dot longest string, and we're just going to set this equal to minus one. Uh, this is going to be our initial value. And we're going to need some sort of result here. And we're going to set this equal to a set. Um, because we want the unique results. We don't want to have duplicates in our results and we don't really care about the order. So uh, we can use a set here to basically take care of any duplicates. Now, remember that we need to do a backtracking DFS. So let's set that up and we're going to call our DFS function and we'll write this in a second, but basically we're going to pass in the string S we're going to pass in the current index of our string. Remember that we're going over the string from left to right. So we need to keep track of where we are. We need to keep track of our current solution, which is just going to be a string builder. So we're going to pass in an empty list because obviously uh, we don't have any answer yet. And remember that uh, we need to keep track of the left and right count for the parentheses. So those are going to both be zero because we haven't done any processing. And we're going to call the DFS function with those initial arguments. And at the end, all we need to do is return um, self.res. So sounds easy, but now it's actually time to write the DFS function. So let's define the function arguments and we just talked about them. So the first argument is obviously going to be the string that we're working with. The second argument is going to be the current index. The third argument is going to be the current result, which is going to represent the string builder of uh, the result that we're building as we go through the backtracking. And then we have our left count and we also have our right count. So those are going to be our function arguments. Now, obviously this is a backtracking DFS and we don't want our recursion to go on forever. It has to end at some point. So what is the endpoint? The endpoint is actually going to be when our current index is greater than or equal to the length of the string, because that means that we have exhausted all the possible indices of our string. So at this point we need to evaluate whether or not we actually have a solution. So we're going to say if current index is greater than or equal to the length of the string. Now what we need to do is check whether or not our solution is valid. And because we're going to be validating whether or not we're taking a correct left or right parenthesis as we go at the end, all we need to do is check whether the left count equals the right count, because that means that we will have removed invalid parentheses as we've gone through our solution. And you'll see how we do that in a second. This is really just building out the solution. So we're going to say if the left count is equal to the right count. What we want to do now is check whether or not we have a better solution. Remember that we're looking for the minimum that we have to remove, right? Remove the minimum number of invalid parentheses, right? We could just literally remove all the parentheses and that would technically be a valid string, but that's not the minimum remove. So we want to make sure that our answer is actually the best answer that we can get. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to check whether or not our current result, its length, is actually longer than the best answer that we have so far, because that means that we actually removed less parentheses and that we're, therefore we have a better answer. So our previous answer is no longer valid. So we need to actually overwrite it. So we're going to now say if the length of the current uh, result is actually greater than self dot longest string. So now we have a better answer. We need to set our new longest string to be the length of whatever the current result is. And we need to reset our result, right? So whatever result we had before is no longer valid because we now have a better solution. So we're going to reset the result to an empty set and we're going to add to it our new result, which is this current res, but obviously it's a string builder. So we actually need to join it together. So we're going to say string dot join and we're going to add the current result. So that's the case where the current result is actually greater than our best result so far. We could also have the case that our current result is equal to the best result that we have so far, which means that we simply need to add our string to this um, result set because it's another valid answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to say else if the length of the current result is equal to self 
the longest string. Now what we want to do is we just want to add the answer to it. So we're going to say self.res.add and then we're going to join our string builder here to get our string because remember we're returning the, the actual string, not the string builder. So we're going to say join cur res. And that's how we basically uh, take care of the case when we've processed the entire string. Otherwise, if we haven't processed the entire string, then we actually need to do our processing. So let's get whatever the current value is at the current index. So we're going to say the current character is going to be string of cur index. So remember that there's three values it can take, right? Our string can contain parentheses and letters. If it's a letter, we don't do anything. We just take them and we continue. We can't not take the letters. We just ignore them and we just add them to the string builder and move on. We only want to, you know, make a decision of whether to take or not to take in the case that we don't have, uh, in the case that we have a left or right parentheses. Strings characters always get taken. So we're going to say if the current character is actually a left parenthesis, we don't know whether or not the left parenthesis will ever be closed after it. So we can't not take it because it could be the case that we needed it, but we could actually accidentally take it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two things we do here, right? We're going to take the current character and we're also not going to take it. So we're going to do two backtracking, one where we take it and one where we don't take it. So let's do the one where we take it first. So we're going to say current res dot append. So we're going to add it to our string builder. So we're going to add the current character and then we're going to go into our backtracking. So we're going to call self dot DFS our string our current index obviously we're going to move the index up by one our current result now we've taken a left parenthesis so we need to increment our left count oops left count by one and we need to keep our right count the same obviously it stays the same and now once that finishes we'll exit from the backtracking and remember that typical backtracking since we added it to our result we now need to remove it oops self oops not this isn't self this should be pop. yeah curres.pop so that's the case where we're taking it. And then we also need to go through the backtracking where we actually ignore this current left parentheses. So we're not going to add anything to our string builder because obviously we're ignoring it. So we're simply just going to call the backtracking function with our string. We're going to move the in we're going to move the index up by ah, yeah, index up by one. We're going to pass in the current result. Oops, current res. Oh, geez, can't type today. L count hasn't changed because we're ignoring the left parenthesis and obviously right count hasn't changed because we're not even working with the right parenthesis so there's no reason it should have. Cool. So that's the case where we have a left parenthesis. What about the case where we have where we have a right parenthesis? So we now have a right parenthesis. And remember that there's two cases again. We can either ignore the right parenthesis or we can take it. So let's do the case where we ignore it first because it's simpler. So we're going to say self.dfs so string, all we're going to do is move the current index up by one and we're going to pass in current res. We're going to pass in L count and right count. Easy peasy. Now, when it comes to taking a right parenthesis, remember that we can't take right parentheses greedily because if we have something like this, or ugh, is it going to autofill? So if we have something like this, right, this is a balanced parenthesis, right? These two lefts are closed by these two rights. But if we see another right now, we can't take this parenthesis because it doesn't matter what comes after it. We could have, you know, 1 million left parentheses. They will never close this one right that came before it, right? Lefts can only close a right parenthesis that comes after it. So if this parenthesis on the right is invalid, then we can't take it because nothing will ever close it. That right parenthesis needs to be closed by a left that comes before it. So what we need to do is we need to check that the left count is currently greater than the right count. Because if it isn't, that means that the, that right parenthesis will never be closed and we can't take it. So we need to make sure that left count is strictly greater than the right count. Otherwise, it won't work. So if we have the case where we can take the right parenthesis, we can basically do the same thing with the left that we did, except for this time it's going to be with the right. So we're going to say current res dot append. We're going to take the current char. We're going to say self.dfs string. Obviously, the current index moves up by one. We're going to pass in the current res. Left count stays the same, except this time the right count gets incremented by one. Once that DFS finishes, then we can say current res.pop. So we're going to pop from that, and we're good to go. 
Cool, so that's the case where we have the right parenthesis. So we've handled the left and the right, and now I'll remember that we can have like English letters in here. And in that case, we just need to take it, add it to the string builder and continue moving on. So we have to take all of our uh, right uh, and all of our letters. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say current whatever the current character is. Uh, we're gonna say self.dfs. We're gonna go pass the string in, obviously. We're gonna pass current index plus one. Uh, plus one, we're gonna say res obviously, and then left count hasn't changed, and right count ha right count hasn't changed. And once we exit out of this DFS, all we need to do is remember this is a backtracking, so we need to get rid of it. So we simply say res dot pop. So that is what we do there. And actually, I don't think we even need this res dot pop because we always keep the letters so we can actually just leave that out uh, there we go so let me just run this make sure I haven't made any bugs because it's quite a lot of code and I can catch it now okay let me submit it and hopefully this works and this is a long one because um, there's a lot of test cases oh shit okay so I think we actually do need that uh, curres.pop to make the backtracking correct so let me just add that back in and Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. It turns out we didn't need that. All right. Uh, anyway, so that is how you solve this problem. Let us think about the time and space complexity. So obviously this is a backtracking question and most backtracking questions are exponential uh, run times, right? And the X, the, the base for our exponential runtime is going to depend on how many things we can possibly do at each iteration of the backtracking. So let's think about the worst case scenario here, which is that our string that we're given is all left parentheses. So the reason that this is the worst case is that because when we have something that's all left parentheses, every single time we go into the backtracking, we're always going to take the left parentheses and we're always going to ignore it, which means that there's two things that we could potentially do, right? If it's all right parentheses, then we have you know, one for sure that we do, and then potentially two, but we're not guaranteed to go into this block here. So you know, at a minimum, we would do one. Same with if it was just all English characters. It would just be one thing that we do each time. But with left parentheses, we always take it and we always ignore it, which means that there's two things we can do each time. And obviously, there's n characters in our um, string. So that means that we have two to the n basically um, operations. So our time complexity here is gonna be two to the n. So our space complexity here is going to be big O of n. And the reason for this is, well, we need to store our, um, you know, our solution, which you know, could potentially just be the string that we're given. If the string, there's actually no characters that we need to remove, then we're just gonna end up storing the string in our uh, result. And then also each backtracking will finish you know itself before actually going to the next one so that depth is going to be big o of n uh, because there's only n iterations we could possibly do so that is your time and space complexity for this algorithm just going over it again it's two to the n for the time because there's in the worst case our string is all left parentheses and we would have to do two operations at each of the n you know iterations through our backtracking so that's why it's two to the n and then for the space we have big o of n so that is how you solve this question. Not exactly the most complicated one. It is quite a lot of code to write, and you know, handling some of these cases can be a bit tricky. But if you've seen, you know, your backtracking questions before, it's really not that bad. I think it's pretty straightforward uh, how you actually solve this one. You just have to have done a few um, parentheses ones and just be familiar with backtracking. But otherwise, like even if you haven't seen it before, like this, this solution is pretty easy to memorize. I haven't done this question in you know, forever. When was the last time I touched it in, what is this, like November? And I, it's, what is it, June now? And I basically have it memorized. So uh, yeah, this one's not really that hard. Anyway, I'm gonna stop blabbering. That's how you solve this problem, leak code 301, remove invalid parentheses. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. 
If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. I have a ton of videos already uploaded and I plan to make a whole lot more. So subscribe to the channel and also leave in the comment section below what questions you want to see and I will add them to my work queue. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great rest of your day.